very few enlistees walk down the demanding path of a battlefield airman. But for a 60-year-old chief, his historical 41-year legacy of this selfless dedication to service is just his way of life. We're a tenth of one percent of the Air Force's population. I mean, we're ground combatants. We're the outliers when you look at the overall mission of the Air Force. I, I get it. Slightly high. All right, come on out. We have a very specific task, and that is to kill the enemy, destroy his ability to fight, save American lives, and bring them home reunited with their families. So that, that hasn't wavered since I came in in 74. At age 60, Chief Kester is the oldest and longest serving pararescueman in United States Air Force history. So back then, we didn't have the internet or computers, and it was a whole lot better time. And uh, you actually had to talk face to face. You know, worst case, you'd pick up the phone. Back in the day, uh, PJ candidates or you know, students would come from the school over to basic training, and they'd show you a 16 millimeter movie, live footage shot over in Vietnam at the time of different rescue missions. So they play that little movie for you. They show a hands in, but want to try out. Of course, you had no idea what you're getting into. Okay, just stand by, baby. We're coming in to get you. Stand by. They say, come meet us at the pool on Saturday. We'll give you a PT test. Hold your hover. Hold your hover. And I came in with the intention to be a gen engine mechanic for four years, and that was it. And I don't know what happened along the way, but here I am. Chief Kester still spends a lot of his time serving by teaching his vast accumulation of knowledge and skills to service members who are preparing to deploy. This is about the most exposed you can possibly be. So this is very much a high stress scenario when we'll find out what decision they're going to make, whether it's worth exposing themselves, jeopardizing the team, get forward and treat this guy, or if they can leave him and come back and get him later on. Let's see how they play. Tighten that thing up as much as you can. Just crank on it. So you, you really got to watch yourself, your backside, and your wingman, as corny as I know that may sound to some. But I don't know that you're ready to go. You, you've got to be on your toes all the time, you know, eyes up, head on a swivel, looking out for yourself and your teammates, and, uh, doing the right thing, both home station as well as when you're deployed. Along with battlefield tactics, skills, and survival techniques, Kester believes the connection between the loved ones at home and the brothers in the field are all of equal importance. Two different lives that you live. Uh, you just try and maintain a balance. Sometimes it gets a little bit insane because no one's ever happy because your family at home never really understands what it is you do until they go to a ceremony or they meet some of the old guys that you've served with and they start talking about their experiences. And then there's the guys that you work with who really never, don't have a grasp of what it is like to be a a family man, or a grandfather in my case. Most of the guys, the airmen that I deployed with were younger than all of my kids. So that, that is kind of different. It's always a juggling act. You know how every James Bond movie starts out? <laughs> <laughs> Guy jumps out of an airplane, you know, and he's coming down, he's fighting his way down, the airship lands right on the spot he needs to land on. Somehow he's next, he's on skis, he skis down two mountain passes, takes out a couple of bad guys, then he ends up in the water, he's scuba diving through the water, uh, comes up with a sniper rifle, takes out a couple of other people. <laughs> And the next thing you know, he saves the damsel in distress, the world's all great, and 007 is a winner again. That's how I think it changed. <laughs> General Hawk Carlisle, ACC commander, said he was more than honored to preside over Chief Kester's retirement ceremony. You know, I thought about doing that, like Letterman used to do, that top 10 reasons you know it's time to retire from active duty. <laughs> Except I lost the list, I couldn't remember what was on it. <laughs> You know, the purpose of this life, rather our lifestyle, our career, is not to arrive at the end, that being retirement, in a well-wrapped, you know, uh, polished, spiffy-looking package, but rather to slide into home plate, bruised, bloody, and broken, dragging parts behind you, screaming out, man, what a hell of a ride. Well, that's where we're at, and it has been one great ride, and I have absolutely no regrets about that whatsoever. Uh, we are still here for that very same reason, and uh, Battlefield and Airmen do it best. No question about it. From Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, I'm Airman First Class Michael Fox.